Hi, in this video I'll be demonstrating how to wire a distribution board and as you can see I've got a lab set up here, I've got some conduits and some outlets. I'm going to walk you through this step by step. In this video I'll be demonstrating how to wire a light circuit, a stove isolator, a plug circuit and a distribution board with earth leakage protection. The following tools will be useful. A spirit level to make sure your DB board is horizontal. Pliers, cable cutters, wire strippers, side cutters, star screwdriver, flat screwdriver, a multimeter. If you are bending the conduit, you might find the spring to be useful for the bending of the conduit. This is a fish line to pull the cable through the conduit. Now in this video, you will see that I'll be using different thickness cables. These are the 16 millimeter supply cables and I have one millimeter neutral cable. There's the live, then I have 2.5 millimeter cable and I also have four millimeter cable. You'll also need your earthing cable, it may be bare copper or with PVC insulation. You might also be using cables that already have the PVC insulation such as twin plus earth. In this installation, I'll be using the Samite rail. The circuit breakers look like this. You might also use a DIN rail and then you'll follow the same principles. Right, so as you can see, the conduits have already been run. Now this would be inside the brick. Now you'd want to run the cables and you can use a fish line like this. Right, now I have my 1.5 millimeter cable. I've got the neutral, which is black. I've got the live, which is red. And then I've got the earth wire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna join it to the fish wire and then pull it through this conduit. You can use insulation tape to feed all three at once, or you can just strip the wires and twist them onto the end of the fish line. Right, now I just pull the fish line and feed the wire. It's very important that you feed the wire because sometimes the wire will get stuck here or grate on the side of your DB board. You might find it's a bit sharp in some places and it might just damage the insulation. So that's why it's good to feed it. Right, now I can cut the cables. Right, this would be a light switch and all I need to do is cut only the live wire and join one side of the live wire to that terminal and the other side to that terminal. The switch, all it does is it opens and closes the live wire circuit. Right, I've cut the live wire and I've removed about one centimeter of the insulation and now all I need to do is wire it to the switch. Right, there you can see the live wires are now connected to the two terminals of the switch. Note that the screw fastens onto the copper. Now you'll see that there is an earth point over here. And the reason for this is this is metallic. And that means that the end user, the person who's going to be using this light switch, may come into contact with this chassis. And therefore it must be earth. So there is the earth wire. All I'm doing, I'm not cutting it. All I'm doing is I'm bending it like that and I'm going to insert it into the earth point just like that. Just using my meter to demonstrate the functionality of the switch. As you can see when I short these wires, you can hear that it is a short circuit. That is a continuity test measuring short circuit. Look. As you can see, I put my one lead on that side of the terminal and one lead on that side of the terminal and nothing is happening. Now when I depress the switch, it allows that live and that live to now be in contact with each other, allowing current to flow and your light to turn on. And now if I switch the switch off, there you can see it opens the circuit, therefore switching off your light. Right, now for the light fitting, you've got your live and your neutral. As I said, if it's a metallic light fitting, you will earth it. And if there's a cover or a bracket like this, you will also earth the bracket. Right, I'm now going to use a 4mm cable. In this case, I'm going to be using it for a stove. There we go. Now you can use an earth cable like this, or you can use an earth cable like this. Right, now here are the wires coming from the DB board. Here is my isolator switch. I've removed the two faceplate screws. So there is the isolator switch, and there are the terminals which I'm going to be working with. Now, as you can see, there are two on the top and two on the bottom. Now just having a look at these, you can see that says 1 and that's 2 
and this is usually your live. So you put your live coming in from the DB board and the live going to your oven or stove will go out here. Then I've got pin five and pin six. This is usually for the neutral. So the neutral coming in from the DB board and the neutral going to feed your load. Now in your case, you might be using a conduit coming out from here and this would be feeding to your stove or oven. Right, so I've put the gland there and then you'll probably have your conduit, maybe even sprag. And I'm just gonna show you the wiring layout now. Right, I just twist it with some pliers to keep all the strands together. Right, now it's time to wire up the isolator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now put the live in terminal one and I'm gonna insert that like so. And I'm gonna put the neutral and this happens to be terminal five. Remember that the pinouts here might be different for different isolator switches. They may not all follow that same numbering sequence and I'll show you with a multimeter how to test it when I'm done. When you insert the wire, push it right all the way into the end. Right, just inspect that the screw that is depressing the copper is actually engaging with the copper. And I can see there it's also engaging with the copper. Those are fastened correctly. Right, now I have my multimeter here set to continuity, as you can hear. Telling me it's a short circuit, so if I measure the faceplate, you see it's a short circuit. Now what I'm doing is I'm just showing you that the connections are correct. I'm putting the one lead on the one live wire and the other lead on the output which is going to the load. Now you can see it is not making any sound and that is because the isolator switch is currently off. Now when I close the switch, you can hear that it is a short circuit. And I open the switch, it disconnects the incoming live from the load side live. Right, now having a look at the neutral, so there you can see I've put the one lead on the neutral terminal and the other lead on the load side neutral terminal. As you can see, it is telling me it is an open circuit. Now when I close the isolator, you can hear that it is a short circuit. And when I open it, right, so that is how the isolator functions. It functions as a double pole switch, which means that both these poles become open when you open the switch and both these poles become closed, the live goes to the live and the neutral goes to the neutral, closing it, allowing current to flow to your load. Now in this particular isolator, you see I've got an earth point over here on the frame of this isolator switch. Now all I need to do is connect both the incoming earth, the earth from the DB board to the earth from the load. Right, so everything is wired up. Now, because we've been fiddling with this, it's always good to go and retighten all the terminals just to make sure that nothing has become loose. Right, now don't just shove this in here. You've got to put this in neatly. So what I normally do is I try and feed these wires and curl them inside there. Be very careful when the earth wires are exposed like this because as you can see, if you just shove this inside, you might find that you've cut off too much of the insulation of maybe the lava, the neutral, and the copper touches that. So it's very important to feed this in and carefully observe the wires where they seat. If you'd like to, you can put some green insulation tape around this earth wire. Right, I'm now going to wire the plug circuit. There you can see I've got my plug and uh, I'm using 2.5 millimeter cable. There's my live, there's my neutral, my earth. I'm just gonna tape them together and drop the wire down. Right, I'm now gonna cut the cables. Right, now on the plug side, all I need to do is take the live and the neutral and wire it into the plug. If you have a look on the back of the plug, there is a live terminal and there's a neutral. So all I need to do is connect the live wire to the live and the neutral to the neutral. And then you'll also see the earth there. In this case, the earth is in the middle and I'll wire the earth cable. Right, so there is the live going to the live, the earth on the earth terminal and there it says N for neutral and now I can close this. When you close this, try and Bend the wires at the back so that they sit snugly against the back plate. You can see I have a plug circuit. I have an oven or stove disconnecting switch. 
and then I have a light in the top corner there and it's light switch. Now I'll show you how to wire this up. In this installation I'll be using the Samite rail, the circuit breakers look like this. You might also use a DIN rail and then you'll follow the same principles. Right, I have a photo showing the finish layout so you have this in your mind while I'm demonstrating. As you can see there's one earth leakage and there'll be three loads. This entire load setup will be protected via earth leakage. Right, in this particular setup, I'm going to use one earth leakage, which is going to protect all the circuits that come after it. Right, these are the supply cables. These are 16 millimeter, and all I need to do is connect them to my earth leakage. Right, it's very important to earth your setup. Here I've got an earth cable. Now, in your home or office, you will need to earth your entire installation. This earth will then be connected to all your plumbing, railings, and possibly an earth spike outside that is hit into the ground. So the earth is connected to the earth rail, and as you can see, I've got some other earth cables here that have already been fastened here. This is the earth wire from my plug circuit, this is the earth wire from my light circuit, and this is the earth wire from my stove circuit. Can you see that all the earths are connected to the same place? Each earth wire has its own slot on this earth rail. Right, now all I need to do is insert the circuit breakers that I'm going to use. Now if you were installing this on a DIN rail, you would follow the same principles. So over here I have my stove circuit, my 20 amp is my plug circuit, my 10 amp is my light circuit in terms of this little setup. Right, so all I need to do now is wire up the output from the earth leakage circuit breaker to these circuit breakers. Right, so I want to go from the output of the live terminal of the earth leakage circuit breaker round the back to the input of the circuit breaker here for the stove or for any one of these circuit breakers. So here is the cable, I've formed it. Now I'm just going to show you how I cut through the insulation. I'm just going to use this tool. All I do is I gently make a mark on the cable and then I just do that. Now what you'll notice is that I do not cut into the copper. If you cut into the copper, you will damage the copper and the copper strands will just break off. So all I'm doing now is actually pulling the insulation off. It's actually more a tearing and pulling rather than a cutting. Right, so there you can see I didn't go into any of the copper strands at all. Right, now I've wired it like this so you can see the wire. You can see it's coming from the output of the circuit breaker to the input of this top rail here. Now because I want all of these circuit breakers to have live voltage at the top there, I'm just going to use a bus bar. You can see there's a bus bar and all I do is I insert the bus bar so that all the circuit breakers are now connected together via that bus bar. Bus bars come in long lengths and in order to cut them all I do is I take my pliers and I make a indentation there and then once there's an indentation, I take the pliers and I bend it forward, back, forward, back, and it tears where you indented it with the pliers. Right, so that top row is now all connected to this live wire. So all I need to do now is tighten these screws. Right, now I've done the live, now all I need to do is give this DB board a neutral wire. Right, now I've already formed the neutral wire, all I'm going to do is connect the neutral from the output of the earth leakage circuit breaker to the neutral rail over here. Right, there is the neutral wire and I've run it this side so you can see clearly that the output of the circuit breaker, the live goes to the top rail and the neutral goes to the common neutral rail. Now it's time just to wire your load. Right, so the first load is the stove. Now I want to take my four millimeter cable and wire it to the output of this circuit breaker. Right, so there is the live from the stove and then the neutral from the stove must go to the neutral rail. So there is the neutral from the stove going into the common neutral rail. Right, now in my lab I only happen to have the flexible wire, so if you're wondering why it looks like this, it's because this is flexible wire. Hopefully you'll have the solid core wires. Right, so that load is now connected. Now the next circuit here is my plugs. So here is my 2.5 millimeter plugs wire. This is the live, which I've now wired to the output of my 20 amp plugs circuit breaker. And then the neutral for the plugs wire, as you can see, must go to the same neutral rail 
Right, now in your case, you'll do it neatly. Now don't forget that each one of these circuits has its own earth wire. So you can see that the earth wire from the plugs is there, and I've already wired the earth wire from the stove. There you can see. Right, now the final circuit is my lights circuit. There is my 1.5 millimeter cable, and I connect that to my 10 amp circuit breaker for the lights. And now the neutral must go also to the neutral rail. Right, so there you can see, all but not very neat. Here are all the neutral wires. Can you see that all the neutral loads are connected to the same place? And can you see the lives each have its own circuit breaker? 30 amp for the stove, 20 amp for my plugs, 10 amp for my lights. Now, very important is this is a basic setup where earth leakage protects all your loads. In some cases, wiring it like this results in nuisance tripping because some circuits, especially oven and lights, tend to trip the earth leakage and sometimes what we do is we use a separate circuit breaker to separate those circuits. However, in this particular video, I'm just showing you how to protect everything with one earth leakage circuit breaker. And that is the point of this video. Right, so everything is now connected. And all I need to do now is check my connections, make sure everything is tight, and then I'll close it up. And now I'll show you how to test it. Right, I have my multimeter here. And as you can see, when it's a short circuit, it will make a noise. And I just want to demonstrate the wiring layout here. As you can see, the incoming live is over there. When I put the lead on the output of the circuit breaker, you can see there is no connectivity because the circuit breaker is down. When I close the circuit breaker or put the circuit breaker up, you can see I have connectivity. Same with the neutral. So this means that this circuit breaker is a double pole circuit breaker, meaning that it opens both the terminals. So you are cutting off the live and the neutral when you drop this circuit breaker. Right, so from the input, when I close the circuit breaker, you can see I have connectivity. Now when I go over here, can you see that I have connectivity from that row? You see that I have connectivity there because look at this wire, it goes all the way there and to the supply. So that also means that if I want connectivity to my stove, which is my 30 amp, that the stove circuit breaker needs to be closed. And if I drop the stove circuit breaker, you can see I'm disconnecting the stove. And if I want to test the plug circuit, you can see it is off. And if I, and if I close the circuit breaker, there you can see I have connectivity. And there were the lights, close the circuit breaker, and there I have conductivity. And if I drop the earth leakage circuit breaker you can see that nothing is connected right now I put the face plate on now in your case you must blank those off you can get some plastic blanks you mustn't leave that open and then it's a good idea to label everything as you can see I've got a booklet here for my label so I can take my sticker there and put lights for the 10 amp I can take a sticker here plugs and put it underneath the plugs circuit breaker there's my stove sticker and I can take it and put it under my stove circuit breaker. Your, then you have your main switch sticker and then your warning labels. Right, so everything is now on. I've switched on the in-feed and now if I switch on my plugs, you can see that the little light there has gone on. As you can see there, my soldering iron is now on. Here on the right hand side, I have my globe and my light switch and as you can see, I can switch on my light. Now, if I trip the 10 amp circuit breaker, you can see that I've disconnected my light circuit. If I drop the 20 amp circuit breaker, you can see that my soldering iron has switched off. Now, the stove circuit I have not connected, so it is irrelevant now. Right now, if I test my earth leakage, you can see that everything gets disconnected. The earth leakage is therefore protecting everything that is after it, and therefore when I drop the earth leakage, everything gets disconnected.